Hello, this is Sam Gerrans from Truth in the News. Today is Saturday the 30th of April 2022 and I'll see if we can just grind our way through yet another really boring instalment of the world's most boring game otherwise known as Propaganda Bingo. Uh, if you haven't watched this game before, you don't know how it works, it, you'll pick it up. It's not very difficult. Um, but anyway, I'll just quickly grind you through the, the main sort of features of of propaganda and this is true of all propaganda it's not just to do with the the russians um special military operation in ukraine it's to do with everything the whole agenda that you've been living through your whole life you know if you're over about 40 you will remember that everything was not quite as um insane and degraded and degenerate as it is now. Well, there's a reason why it's gone from where it was before to where it is now. It's because there's this thing called a plan. And and you, you know, you plan in sort of like maybe a week or a month. Maybe you want to go on holiday or maybe you want something really even more fab to eat than you had yesterday. These are your sorts of plans. But the people who manage you, they don't, they don't, they don't work in those sorts of plans. These are the sorts of people who built the cathedrals of Europe. And the, the way these sorts of things are built is... You know, one king, you know, he he makes the west wing and then his son builds, the, the, you know, the the east wing and then his grandson builds, you know, the central portion and his great grand. This is how it works. They, this is how these people think. Your rulers, your betters, the people who know much better than you do what to do with you. Um, just as they have you know, herds of cattle and all this sort of thing, they've got herds of people to deal with. And the, 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 there are whole books written on how to deal with you. And just because you haven't read any of those books, that's not your, that's not their fault, that's your fault. And even if you had read them, it wouldn't make any difference because they're not going to let you close to the levers of power. Because the way it works is, is if it's basically might is right. I guess it's if you kind of break it down, it works to that. If you were capable of, of being a world ruler, you'd be one. So would I. But we're not capable of it. So we're not, Okay. Uh, but they keep you deluded with all this stuff like democracy and human rights and you have a choice and go shopping and all of this stuff. This is just to keep you busy. <clears throat> but And anyway, they know you're too stupid to follow any of this. And uh, uh, to be fair to them, I mean, their every waking moment confirms the correctness of their assumptions. So this is just how it is. So all I'm doing is just on this channel is just, is just explaining how one very small part of this much, much bigger mechanism works. Anyway... If you're still here, now I'll explain to you basically how this little bit works. As I say, each day I just re repeat myself because it's like working in McDonald's. As I've only got eight things at, behind the counter here. And if you want to eat at this counter, it's going to be, you know, Big Mac or, or fries or, or a shake or whatever it is. Because that's all I've got. Um, but it's that's how simple it is. Anyway, let's just quickly go through them. This is the first one. Unrelated items. Hello, how are you doing? You know the telephone call you get in the middle of the day from some scammer in some country you've never been to who wants to insinuate himself into his life. Well, this is how propaganda works. There will be unrelated items quite often, not always, but quite often. They'll start, even in one sentence, it'll start off talking about one thing and then it'll link it to something that if you sat down and thought about it, if you were capable of doing that, you would realise these two things are not related at all, but they're just sort of, it, it slides from one into the other. And, and just to go back to this, the same thing I say every, every day, what's, what's the point of all of this? Well, the point of all of this is to basically to programme you because you're basically a computer and you run on software and the software is language and obviously you don't have many words anymore because you haven't read any books but if you, it's all right because the language has been so degraded you're running on a, a kind of simplified version of whatever you know whatever it was they were using before and uh, the way it works is is that Emotions can be placed into your nervous system by use of particular usage of language, attaching key words, usually key words, to particular responses. These are called triggers. And that's why the people that you're, you're dealing with on a daily basis seem so triggered. They are triggered. They are brainwashed. I'm not saying it's to be nasty to them, but you'll understand modern culture much, much better if you read a few books about cults, like religious cults, because that's what you're living in. And you can't, you can't, um, if you if you you need a certain level of intelligence really to be susceptible to indoctrination in a cult. It's not that people are stupid. It's very easy to think that people around you are stupid. They're not. They're not necessarily. I mean, they might be as well, but that's not necessarily the thing. What they are is is uh, they have a very limited uh, sort of subset of information, 
and, and a very particular way of interpreting that information. And that's the way it works. And so read a few books about cults. I mean, if you do read about cult, books about cults, they do tend to be rather cultic in the sense that they tend to um, be predicated on the idea that people who've left the, the cult, whatever it is, um, and then go into the, the big wide world, have, are now out of the cult. They, they can't seem to work out that actually all you've done is gone from the little cult to the big cult. But that's, what, that's how cults work, you see. They work, just skip ahead, uh, on the basis of gaslighting, you see. They're assumed conclusions. Uh, that's just how it works. Anyway, number two is uh, opinion leaders. Opinion leaders... They tell me exactly what to do and how to do it. They tell you exactly what to do and how to do it. They, these are the people who are better educated and better informed than you. And basically the way it works is that most people, not only can they not think for themselves, they really don't want to think for themselves. They say that they do because they've been told that that's what they should think, but they don't really think that. If you watch people in reality, they don't want to think for themselves at all. It's not just that they can't, it's that they don't want to. They want to be told what to do. It's just how most people are. And it might sound to you as though I'm complaining about this. I'm not complaining about any of this. For me, I'm just describing to you how a McDonald's works, as it were. I'm, I'm not saying this is good or bad. I'm just saying this is what is. Uh, my own personal view, it's, uh, I think we're far beyond the point of saving uh, Western civilization, and we deserve pretty much everything that we're going to get. That's me. But, you know, seeing as I'm discussing this particular subject, I have to try to kind of do it some sort of justice. So anyway, uh, what was that? Point two, yeah. Opinion leaders. These are people, yeah, they're going to tell you exactly what to do and what to think and how to think it because you don't want to do that for yourself. You, It's comforting for somebody else to tell you, to take away the responsibility of, of you having to make any sort of objective or adult decisions. You want someone to make you feel safe and warm and secure and that everything's going to be all right, to tuck you back up in bed and sing you a little lullaby and make you think that all the bad things are going to go away. And who wouldn't want that? I agree, I'd like that too, but I just know that it's a complete lie, so unfortunately I'm stuffed on that one. Okay, missing context. <gasps> this is Maria Gonzalez. She's actually my favourite, Maria, because Maria's just cracked her boyfriend Juan's telephone and discovered that everything that Juan has told her was a complete lie. Well, that's how that's how propaganda works. It leaves out bits. The bits it leaves out far more important than the bits, or as important as the bits it puts in. All right, the next one is obfuscation and simulation. This is Zoe. Where are you? What's happened to you? I don't know what's happened to Zoe. Her little her her buttons don't work today. Um, Add me as a friend. Thank you, Zoe. We're skipping loads of frames here. I don't want to matter with this program. There's nothing I can do about it. And I haven't got time to just waste loads of time on it. Um, it's really sad because you put all this, you know, time into stuff and it just... Anyway, it's nothing you can do about it. So I, I expect the video is very jerky. But anyway, obfuscation and simulation. This is this is what, uh, this is what um, journalism does. It pretends to be journalism. It's not really journalism, but it pretends to be. Just like Zoe's pretending to, that she might be your girlfriend one day, but she definitely won't. Gaslighting, we've already done. Gaslighting is assumed conclusions. Shaming language and insults. Oh. Very bad man. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, we get this. This is basically what the West has, has, has devolved into. Uh, kind of, um, uh, a visionary genshin, I don't know, it's uh, like a, an offended woman, sort of, you know, with those big, round, baleful eyes because you're so cruel and evil. Um, you get tons of it. You get it in comments. Uh, this is how you shut people up. You just tell them that they're an it, an east or nob. Uh, lies or demonization, I'm sure we've all seen this one before. And propaganda payload, this is the reason that we're doing the thing. That's This is the moral of the story. Anyway, let's just jump straight into this. I hope the video is not so terrible, but if it is, we'll just have to deal with it. And we'll look at this one. Now, I haven't read this, but I do know what it's about. And the reason why I'm interested in this is because um, of what they're doing. Now, I'll just read a bit of it. Two British aid workers captured by the Russians... Russians, have you captured the British aid workers? Yes, comrade. I thought you had, you evil Russians. Now, um, in Ukraine, and the reason why this is interesting to me is because, I mean, I th if I were to characterise the West, what it really looks like to me is a, is a sort of hysterical 13-year-old girl. And and Russia, as I've said before, is a man with a gun. And this is really the, com you know, the, the contrast that's going on here. Now, when I say that the West is very... F Feminine. I don't mean it in in the sultry, attractive, sexually uh, compelling sense. I don't mean that. 
I mean in the hysterical hissy fit throwing um, uh, absolutely kind of like universally good at remembering everything's happened in the past uh, divorce raping sort of sense uh, yes Amber Heard all right the West is basically Amber Heard and um, the whole way that this works it's to do with plausible deniability and lack of accountability and responsibility on the one hand and this we'll get into this in a minute with the aid worker thing on the one hand what they want is they want to be i'm talking about women here generally in the west they they what they want is plausible deniability they want to work both sides of the equation so on the one hand they use their femininity and why wouldn't they to to advance themselves but the second they get called on that you're an ist an or an ob of some kind and then they can kind of uh, kind of hook themselves up on 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 the next on the next pathway and they will understand that this is how how it works and this can only be um, permitted in a society that is has been has been made successful to such an extent that it can allow for this type of behavior deviant behavior because the women don't really take responsibility i'm talking about these types of amber heard sort of women i'm not saying that all women are like this i'm saying that this is a very particular type and it's now really dominant in the west and men are terrified of this and but men operate like this too now they have that they have this sort of feminine if you can use that word it's a kind of it's a degenerate um feminine characteristic and the reason why i'm saying this is because rather than going in there and saying yeah you know we're soldiers uh, now what they're doing is they're saying, oh, we're aid workers. It's this plausible deniability thing. Anyway, let's just, I haven't read this, but I know what it's about. So I'm, I'm able to make these uh, these sorts of statements. I'm, I don't think I'm going to be badly wrong-footed by what's coming up, but we'll see. So two British aid workers captured by Russians in Ukraine. Ukrainian intelligence claims the Kremlin is carrying out a campaign of kidnapping. Well, I think we just ignore what uh, the Ukrainian intelligence says because that's really just the CIA. And we'll just jump into this. Two British aid workers have been captured by Russian forces in Ukraine, a humanitarian organization, organization said. So first of all, this is humanitarian organization. So you like the word humanitarian, don't you? It's a nice, cozy, kind of fuzzy sort of word. Uh, who could possibly disagree with humanitarian? So so they've kind of... Um, They've kind of, you know, checkmated you right there. Um, captured by the Russian forces. Captured. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't mean detained or questioned or anything, but captured. Well, there you are. That's, that's an emotive word. Um, to, and aid workers. Well, let's see how much of aid workers they really are. And again, aid. Just going back to this thing um, that everybody loves in the West. Gush. You see, and this, this, this kind of feeds into this diseased idea of femininity as well where gush and, and compassion aid this is a rather feminine kind of uh, attribute isn't it to aid somebody to help them to support them who could possibly disagree with that well the russians quite clearly don't like people coming into their war zones it doesn't matter what gush you've got going on inside you and and gush is not only the um, the sort of energy behind the, the the propaganda it's it's also the justification if you have gush you can't be questioned. I had gush, therefore my motives are beyond question. Yeah, but you're in a war zone and you're not, I expect, part of anything real. And who cares about your feelings? Russians don't care about your feelings. You can be certain. I've lived in 20 years, 20 years in Russia. Um, as I say, I speak the language, etc. Uh, Russians have many, uh, have many faults. They have many uh, features that are, are great, actually. But they don't care about your feelings much. I mean, they might ask you, like, if you're friends, about your mood, okay? But it is, it does just kind of mean, how are you? It doesn't really mean I care about your mood very much. And in a formal sense, like in a more broader, in a, in a broader sense across the, the society, your feelings are, are kind of... Um, in terms of levels of importance, you know, you know when you, you know when you see those fish in some of those um, uh, kind of natural science programs about the bottom of you know fifteen miles at the bottom of the ocean somewhere, and you've got this like really flat white fish with a single eye stuck in its back. That's where that's where Russian concern for feelings resides. It's down there, okay, somewhere. 
They don't care. Not like you lot, where your feelings are like really important because you're living in this solipsistic universe created for yourself, by yourself, and you're the only person who, who matters in it. In Russia, we have this conception called narod. It's like the people. And basically, nobody cares what any of the individuals in that, in that block, <laughs> any of them think, all right? Or feel, more particularly what they feel. Uh, certainly, it hasn't been a major feature of my life since I've been here. Anyway, let's get back to this. Two British aid wor workers have been captured by Russian forces in Ukraine, a humanitarian organization said. Presidium Network said, Presidium Network, I assume this is the humanitarian organization. If you've ever heard of this organization before, well, congratulations, I never heard of it. Uh, said, they probably, they probably just made it up like five minutes ago. Um, but who knows? Who cares? Anyway, you haven't got memory. This is the great thing of having no memory. You can't be held to account you know, like a hysterical woman, uh, said Paul Ure and Dylan Healy were detained. Oh, there's a different word now. Not captured, but detained. Interesting. On Monday at a checkpoint south of the city of Zaporozhye. Okay, at a checkpoint, a military checkpoint. So here they were, a couple of British, let's just, let's just get rid of all this, uh, this kind of virtue signaling language. Two British citizens were in Ukraine and were stopped by the the Russian authorities. Okay, does it, does that sound like a very unreasonable thing to happen? Given that it's a war, it doesn't sound very unreasonable to me. It sounds pretty reasonable to me. The Foreign Office. Here we are. The Foreign Office. Uh, they're back. The Foreign Office um, was seek, uh, urgently seeking more information. I've noticed about the the Foreign Office. The last one that I looked at yesterday, they were urgently seeking stuff there. They don't just seek it; they urgently seek it. Um, is there, you know, they've got, they got a special mouse click for this. They click it extra hard because they're urgently seeking it. Does it make you feel safe to know that the, the, the foreign office is urgently seeking something? Doesn't make me feel anything at all because I don't care. Minister Anne-Marie, Anne-Marie, I was going into French. Minister Anne-Marie uh, Trevelyan told Sky News it was, quote, doing all it can to support and identify these two people. So, I mean, I'd, I'd, uh, let's get rid of our gush meter. Um, although we are kind of in gush at the moment. S when the Foreign Office supports you, just in, just so you know, they're not required to give you any money or help you in any way. What they are supposed to do is provide you basically with stamps and envelopes. That's kind of pretty much it. It makes you feel like, well, it's the Foreign Office and here I am, I'm a British citizen. I am wrapped in the Union Jack and doesn't matter that my my life decisions have been completely hopeless and delusional. The British flag will sort me out. Uh, I wouldn't put that to the test if I were you. Okay. Presidium Network, an, a UK-based NGO. I mean, I don't know about this particular one, but NGOs are basically organizations that you don't vote for if you believe in voting if you think it's a you know if that makes you feel cozy um that you don't vote for that make decisions that that you have no choice about funded usually by people that you've never heard of that's what ngos are these are but uh, these are kind of like the, these are decision making centers that disregard you which for me i take that as uh as axiomatic i don't expect the plebs to be involved in any of the decision making process going back to what i said at the beginning because of the rulers they know that if you were if you were worth taking into account you'd be them and you're not so who cares but we things we're sort of paying lip service to this idea of democracy just so you know ngos are a ways of circumventing anything to do with what what we mean by democracy i don't know what we mean by democracy i've never really heard a cogent description or definition of this but everybody i meet tells me that it's a wonderful idea uh, over and over again. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. <laughs> because the rulers want you to think this, Tosh. Why else would you think it? Anyway, who cares about any of that, Sam? Get on with it. Um, Presidium Network, blah, UK-based NGO said the pair were part of a humanitarian operation in Ukraine. Oh, well, that's all right then. Go to any war you feel like. Humanitarian. What does that mean, humanitarian? It means gush is what it means. Here we are. Let's put the gush, gush on my up. They had some gush. Did anybody, did the Russians ask them to go there? 
No, no, they didn't. Did the Ukrainian citizens say, you know what we need? We need two young men or young men from, from Britain to come and gush for us. Is that what happened? No, it's not what happened. So their gush, let's assume, uh, in, induced them to go somewhere that they presumably don't speak the language, have absolutely nothing to, to contribute, no skills of any particular relevance. Um, but they had gush. So, well, that's all right then. That answers that question. To help provide food and medical supplies and evacuation support, adding that they were not working for the organisation. OK, so the only thing that this NGO has managed to establish here, let's get rid of our gushometer, is that these two people, this NGO... Oops. Gush and outreach. That's good. It's like hitting the brakes and the accelerator at the same time. Um, so this NGO that you've never heard of and probably will never hear of again, made an authoritative statement to say that these people were nothing to do with it. Okay, but who cares about any of this? You can't be expected to remember any of this. But it's not to do with facts. It's certainly not to do with logic. It's not to do with reason. It's to do with feelings. You have a feeling about the word humanitarian. <gasps> humanitarian. Says who? Defined by who? What is humanitarian? Well, I guess it must be teddy bears and cosy things and... I don't know. Sugar puffs, unicorns, stuff like that. Who could possibly disagree with any of those things? Except somebody who's evil. Like me, I must be terrible. Oh, you're a very bad man. Yeah, if you have a memory or any kind of functioning brain, you're just evil nowadays. Anyway, who cares about any of that? So, adding, they were not working for the organisation. So the one thing that these authoritative organisations managed to establish is that these two people had nothing to do with it. OK, well, that's all right then. They were helping a woman and two children evacuate a town southwest of Zaporozhye when they were stopped and accused of being British spies. Well, that sounds like a very reasonable assumption to me. I mean, I'm sorry to kind of rain on everyone's parade. Um... Well, you know, while we are having a, a, a froth and gush meltdown. But if I were a, a Russian um, military commander or even just, you know, a basic soldier and I saw Brit undocumented British people who were not members of the uh, NGO uh, Presidium Network or anything else that I'd ever heard of um, wandering around the place, I, I, my assumption, my assumption, unless I was provided with proof to the contrary would be that these people were there under you know under false pretenses at the very least i think it's a reasonable assumption a reasonable assumption given the circumstances they weren't wandering around um i don't know some sort of ho uh, seaside resort in bermuda shorts with with margaritas uh calling you know cat calling the passing the passing girls. No, they were in Ukraine. But because they're British, and you've used the word humanitarian a few times, and, oh, here we are, they're helping, you know, they're helping the underdog. They were helping a woman and two children evacuate to a town southwest of Zap Zaporozhye. Well, says they. I mean, you know, in, in, in sort of... Um, I mean, maybe they were. But so what? They don't have any reason to be there, but but you, by the end of this, you'll feel that they that, that the British been the Russians are evil. Russians, are you evil? Yes, comrade. Thank you. I thought you might be. Let's carry on. Um, and were stopped and accused of being British spies, which sounds like a very reasonable assumption to me. Presidium Network. Remember the company. The, this, in case you have a brain, like still some part of it works. The one thing we know about Presidium Network is that they have nothing to do with this whoever it is, okay? I'm sorry to kind of like insist on the blinding the obvious, which is all I really do in this program. Um, but that's the one fact that we do know, apparently, according to this piece of, you know, not very good propaganda tosh, is that it's not connected with these people. But now they're the authority. Are you the authority? Yes. Just tell me exactly what to do and how to do it. Yeah, tell me exactly what to do and how to do it because I'm too stupid to think for myself. Presidium Network said they had had contact with Mr. Ure around 4 p.m. Sorry, 4 a.m. on Monday. Well, that's in the morning. They must be very serious. A statement from Linda Ure. OK, now we're going to go over the hills and far away. We've we, we've set up kind of the, the, prost, the postulates of this, which are very shaky at the very least. 
but you can't be expected to remember any of this because you're too dumb. <laughs> so now, now, now that we've failed to set up the basis upon which we're going to proceed, we're going to forget all about that. Just let that particular house of cards collapse and move on to the next piece of tosh that you'll forget about in seven minutes. This is how it works. They despise you. They utterly despise you. The people who write this, the people who edit this, the people who control the companies that push this stuff out, they know that you can't maintain a single thought for more than about seven seconds. And it's written with this in, in view. Anyway, who cares about any of that? Let's just carry on. A statement from, okay, we're going into Gush world. Hold on, let me get the Gushometer up. Well, Gush or Outrage said he was a type one. Oh, no, it's, 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 well, it's sort of both, isn't it? Let's turn them both on. <laughs> um, said he was a type one diabetic who needs insulin treatment. Hold on. I thought he'd gone there because he cared deeply about saving a woman and sounds a bit suspect to me, but let's not speculate on that. Um, so actually what he is, is a total liability. This type one diabetic who now we should be, I think we should be gushing about or outraged about. I'm not sure. I mean, actually gush and outrage kind of join up in the middle somewhere, don't they? Um, we're supposed to, they're extremely worried about him. Those evil Russians. Are you evil Russians? Yes, comrade. I thought you might be. How dare they deprive a type one diabetic who's decided to go off to a war zone, unaffiliated with any organization that he, anybody knows about. Um, but if you don't really have a lot of gush about this, we are in gush, aren't we? Yes. You're just evil. Are you evil? Yes, we're evil. Um, oh, you're a very bad man. This is what happens, you see. If you actually have a functioning brain, you just you just end up in the very bad man camp. Anyway, let's finish up. I don't suppose there's too much of this. I mean, how long can you drag this out? Let's have a quick look. Oh, no. A, oh, you know, oh we're going to go into yesterday's one as well. All right. So they're extremely worried. Oh, oh dear. Mr. Yuri, 45, is understood to be a family man with two children from northwest England, but he's full of gush, so who cares about any of that? He took up humanitarian aid work after failing to qualify for the army and spent eight years working in Afghanistan. Sounds pretty suspect to me, but... So he, he, he wasn't able to kind of kill people which was his first, he was his um, profession of first choice. Having failed to qualify as somebody who goes and kills people for a living, he now feels that he's called to go and help them. But he's not a member of any proper organisation. And there, just to be clear, there are Westerners. Uh, Patrick Lancaster, look him up. He's, he's in Mariupol. Uh, not only is he functioning very freely and happily amongst the Russians, the Russians are providing him with basically security detail. So the Russians are very amenable to qualified and relevant uh, people from the West being there. Uh, they, they don't just go around arresting Westerners for no reason. They have a reason. It's a war zone. And this chap quite clearly uh, at least has been detained, uh, as, as I expect subject to some sort of um, structured questioning process, which isn't going to feature very much the word gush. How much gush do you feel? Mr. Yure. Because Russians don't have gush. They don't have outrage. They have f facts. Facts and laws. It, it's, it, gush doesn't work here. If you try gush here... <laughs> I mean, you can try it. But you'd do much, much better to try something else. Uh, I'm just trying to think of a kind of comparable situation. Traffic police. What I do not do when I'm stopped by the traffic police is is gush. I don't don't do that. It wouldn't get very far. Much better way of dealing with tra Russian traffic police is to change the subject. Uh, I do find Russians very amenable to to conversation in a way that you definitely wouldn't get in the West. No amount of gush is going to get you probably out of a, out of a traffic traffic fine in the UK. But I do find that in Russia, a, a, a long conversation about David Beckham might might just do it or um, some sort of pseudo political conversation. <laughs> if, you, if you've got the time, uh, those sorts of things can completely make traffic fines disappear, because if you treat them, you know, like you have to understand that most Russian traffic police are pretty bored. They have the same kind of experience 
day after day after day. So if you can be more interesting than their average kind of person that they stop, um, which I flatter myself that generally I am, then I'm not saying you'll always get out of it. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you definitely won't. Um, uh, but if you if you're creative and non gushy, you quite often you'll find that they're very sympathetic to the fact that you've spent 15 minutes with them talking about something that they're interested in. I'm not saying it's going to work every time. It, it, no, it won't. But uh, would it work on occasion? Yeah, definitely. But what won't work is gush or outrage. Outrage. <laughs> Try outrage, and I don't think that I don't. I don't recommend that with with the with the Russian traffic police. If I got out of my car outraged that I'd been stopped, yeah, I can see that going very very badly, very very quickly. It doesn't. It's not even an option. Gush. I don't think they wouldn't know what it was. So I don't. It isn't. But 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 philosophical conversation that, that can work anyway i don't suppose anyone's interested in any of that let's get back to this mr yuri 45 is understood to be a family man well that must be good oh, he's a family man well that's all right then you can go off any way you like and rescue rescue <laughs> unwed married unmarried women possibly from from cities you've never been to i mean what, what, are you following any of this with two children from northwest of england it doesn't sound very it sounds a little bit Right, there's another story here, a much more interesting story than the one we're being given. He took up humanitarian aid work after fair. Oh, we've had all this. Mr. Healy, 22, from Huntington. I thought they hadn't been identified, this second person. Oh, it doesn't matter. Who cares? From Huntington, Cambridgeshire, was a kitchen manager at a UK hotel chain before heading to Ukraine. Well, sounds like he has plenty of qualifications to go off gallivanting around war zones, rescuing damsels in distress, doesn't it? The pair were said to be friends. Oh, well, that's fine then. Dominique or Dominic Byrne, founder... We're back to the Presidium Network. The only thing we know about is that this thing is not associated with either of these captured men. Have you been... Russians, have you captured these two very compassionate, gushy um, hotel manager and failed military men? Yes, comrade. I thought you probably had. You're so evil. Um Was appealing on behalf of the captured men. He said, quote, basically what needs... What needs done? What needs done? Every article I read has got some grammatical mistake in it. Now, I understand. I'm a writer. I mean, we all make grammatical mistakes when we write. I understand that. But this is a, a major news outlet, and it doesn't seem to use a proofreader. And everything that you're getting now in the West is getting worse and worse. Um, I'm not saying that Russian media never has grammatical errors in it, but, but much much more rarely do you come across them. I mean, if you're reading something like Commerçant, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't see it as a regular feature. But every article I've read over the last few days has had some basic error in it. Anyway, where were we? Basically, what needs done is two things. We need to put pressure on the government to take this case seriously. Oh, well, the British government. Oh, they'll sort it all out. The British government. This is government that got you into this, this mess in the first place. The British government. Well, I mean, if you believe in government, if you think that they're really in charge, uh, if you think that, you, in my view, you're very naive. But anyway, um, so that's the first thing. And try through their networks to verify this, but also to kind of help us find these people. Well, that sounds like a plan to kind of help us find these people. I'm really glad I'm not depending on uh, Dominic Byrne of the Presidium Network, whatever that is, to help me. I mean, if I decided to leave my wife and children go gallivanting ac across Ukraine, uh, apparently rescuing random people with no plan of how to get them out of the country, I'm very glad that Dominic's not on my case. That's just me. Continued. But also because I know diplomatic channels are completely broken down. Well, that's what happens if you uh, completely ignore what countries say and then supply their, uh, supply the people who, that you're fighting with with weapons and, and all the rest of it. We use these tactics to find people by having it very public and putting pressure publicly, putting pressure publicly. Alliteration. I don't know if these people ever went to any sort of school. Putting pressure publicly on Russia to determine that they have 
got that they have got these two people and that they're safe and well. And we want to tell tell. We want to tell tell the Russians basically that these aren't spies. I see. And your basis for this is what? What's this big piece of information that you've got, Dominic, that's gonna gonna persuade the Russians? Ah, I know what it is. It's the usual. It's gush. You have some gush. Dominic's going to gush on your behalf. Oh, well, that's all fine then. But if you fail to be impressed by the gush, he's got something else to get you with. Ah, outrage. There you are. I told you Russians don't care about either of these things. Do not care. At least the traffic police don't care. I haven't had a lot of dealings with the Russian military. I have to be honest about that. But I, I, my, my sense is that the Russian police and the Russian military, they're not exactly the same, but they are, they are in some ways culturally um, com comparable for the reason that pretty much everyone who's in the police already served in the army. That's where that's that's their that's the kind of pool that they they draw from. So when you're dealing with a policeman in this country, you're dealing with somebody I think who's served in at least will have done his his compulsory military service. So I don't think the culture can be hugely different in these two organisations. And as I say. Gush and uh, outrage are not things that the Russian police, at least, are particularly impressed by or even understand. I just don't think they would know. I just don't think they would understand what they were. <laughs> That's just me. Anyway, who cares? We want to tell the Russians, basically, that these aren't spies. They aren't military people. They are just humanitarian workers who got caught in a bad situation. So this is going back to the plausible deniability thing. This feminine, very kind of, not in feminine in the nice, you know, attractive, compelling sort of sense, but feminine, in, as I say, in the Amber Heard's. Well, I mean, Amber Heard, she's certainly compelling, but, but would you... <laughs> Would you want to have anything to do with her in this in this deviant, destructive, um, colluding, divisive sense? That's that's what I'm talking about. Which really the West is like this. Like overall, that's what it is. It's and this is um, it doesn't take any responsibility for its actions, ever, as far as I can see, ever. What it does is come back at you with name calling, shaming language, gush or outrage. That's all it's got. Aren't you sick of all this yet? Yeah, don't wouldn't you rather just be part of a of a society of a culture that took some responsibility? Everybody who gets accused of anything in the West that I've seen in the last 10, 15 years capitulates. It's just it just lies on the floor supine before any accusation of ist, it, or ob. They don't say, you know, <laughs> jump in the lake. I don't care what you think about me. No. Everybody's cut falling over themselves to be immune from any sort of criticism there's no way of being immune from, from criticism none if you're going to get anything done you have to stand your ground it's called being a man i'm not allowed to talk about that in the west but i don't care anyway let's just carry on with this tosh i don't think there's much left so yeah it's not their fault they want they want special they like like a woman like they just want special special treatment they started off wanting to play on a level playing field, but now now things have gone bad for them. They're going to start crying like little girls. It's pathetic. They're just humanitarian workers. Well, I mean, we know for a fact, at least according to the testimony of this piece of tripe, that one of them was a failed wannabe go and kill people sort of person, but he wasn't able to, to manage that. And if the Russians have got, you know, got that piece of information i should imagine that it's quite interesting to them and also you have to understand that you know there are lots of cover stories out there i mean i don't think i'm really stretching the st stretching the, the the bounds of the narrative to suggest that the russian government sorry the british government has been known on occasion to lie i mean not to tell the entire truth and for the russians not to believe what the west has got to say at this particular juncture i think would be erring on the side of common sense. Ukraine's main intelligence directorate, the G-U-R, so this is Ukraine. These are the same people whose every single uh, story over the last two, two months and change has been proven within 24 to 48 hours to be a total lie. Said on Wednesday that Russian forces were abducting people in Zaporozhye and other parts of Ukraine for likely use in further 
prison exchanges. Okay, we've we've had just just to point out the use of language. We started off with captured, and then we had detained, and now we've got uh, abducting. But this is the same, whatever, whatever, whatever the reality is on the ground, that hasn't changed. But these words, these words have a different feeling about them, don't they? But who cares? Because everyone's too stupid to follow any of this anyway. This filtration campaign targets men of military age. <laughs> oh, surprisingly. Former military and law enforcement personnel and pro-Ukrainian activists for interrogation, torture and possible execution according to the Institute for the Study of War. Well, I mean, as I say, the Ukrainians and, and those Western agencies aligned with them are, have been basically discredited, I think, beyond, uh, beyond any, um, any point of return. But the fact is that the filtration campaign targeting men of military age, former military and law enforcement personnel and pro-Ukrainian activists I mean, targeting those people, wouldn't that be a very sensible thing to do? Like, but no, it's not. Why? Because, because the same reason always. Gush, gush, and the corollary is outrage. All right, let's get through this while we still can be bothered. The GUR also said Russian forces were sending Ukrainian hostages to Crimea to, quote, replenish the exchange fund, end quote, and speculated, a speculation, that they may be preparing to use the captives in the Ninth of May Victory Day celebrations as they did in Donetsk in 2014. Well, I would, I would fact check some of those claims um, regarding Donetsk. Uh, this is hilarious. The capture of the aid workers came to light the day after the first report that a British person had been killed fighting Ukraine. Now, this, this is an unrelated item. Hello, how are you doing? But you can't be expected to notice this. I mean, you're so probably in such a stupor after getting to this point in the article. I know I, I am. I can't stand any more of it. Um, okay, this is what we looked at yesterday. Scott Sibley, a British Army veteran, was identified as the dead man. Okay, so he, he was. He was precisely the type of man that, that the Russians are looking for. And these other two men seem very similar to these sorts of men. And so they've detained them. I can't see that this would be anything other than an extremely sensible policy, given, uh, given the facts on the ground. And no amount of gush or outrage is going to, is going to sort of divest me of this, of this uh, point of view. A second UK national was reported missing. It's thought the pair were fighting against invading Russian forces. Are you invading Russian forces? Yes, comrade. I thought you were. Are you going to give us some sort of uh, background to this situation? Yes, comrade. Ah, where are we going to get that from then? Um, is it John Mearsheimer's presentation 2015 where he spends an hour and a half explaining to people what the background to Ukraine is and if you haven't watched that, that you don't know anything about the situation? Is it that? Yes, comrade. Thank you. You're always very obliging, aren't you? Yes, comrade. Right, let's just get on with this and finish up. It is thought the pair were fighting against invading Russian forces as volunteers, i.e. i.e. mercenaries. That's the actual term. Um, supporting Ukraine's army, though this was not confirmed. So it is confirmed. It's not confirmed. It is. It's true. It's not true. It kind of is true. Who cares if it's true? You can't be expected to follow any of this. Just go back to sleep, for goodness sake. Um, a small number of British troops are known to have travelled to Ukraine since Russia invaded. Anyway, we'll just let that slide. Last week, two British fighters were paraded on Russian state TV after being captured in Mariupol. Um, I think this is this Aslin, Aslin, whatever his name is, who was, I, if they're talking about the interview that I saw, was he was interviewed by somebody he actually requested himself. So that's hardly being paraded. Anyway, paraded technically means walking up and down, but I mean doesn't matter. It's only language. The UK has formally told all citizens not to travel to Ukraine. Well, <laughs> after Liz Truss, <laughs> the moron in residence did what she had to do and declined to send troops to support the war effort. Well, again, it is and it isn't. It's sending, I believe, 8,000 troops to uh, eastern Poland. Um, I expect they'll drag you into this war, but the main part of the main point of this war is I don't think it's anything to do with Ukraine. It's really about destroying you lot. And um, I said that at the very beginning. 
And uh, if anyone's got a memory, they'll remember that not so long ago, uh, Klaus Schwab was telling you that you would you would have nothing. Well, you've got a lot less than you had a few months ago. So you're on target, aren't you? The UK has formally told all citizens not to travel their government assisting complying with weapons and financial aid. Yeah, kickbacks, etc. In line with Western allies. Yeah, this word allies. As a sum, but somebody very astutely pointed out in the comments, I really like this. If you break the word allies down, it's, it's basically, well, I mean, with an extra L, all lies. It's, it's fascinating. Anyway, well, to me it is. The Ministry of Defence announced on Friday that around, yeah, here we are, 8,000 British troops will be sent this summer to take part in exercises. Oh, how wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, oh, jolly nice summer holiday. <laughs> yes, we're going to order some of those poles around. Left, right, left, right. But we're not here to invade Ukraine. No, no, no. We're just here to sip to <laughs> for cucumber sandwiches and tea. Well, that's all right then. Because the British never do anything bad or evil. Not ever. Not ever. I mean, we used to do bad, evil things on our own account. It used to be sort of Britain. But now we just sort of, we just sort of participate in the Americans bring a bottle kind of wars. But anyway will be sent to take part in exercises across East Europe. Exercises. It makes it sound like we're sort of walking in the Alps, taking in the air, maybe maybe stopping off at a, I don't know, a spring to take the waters and then continuing on our, our happy way in plus fours um, with a deer stalker. No, that's not what it's about at all. It's about practicing to murder people. That's what they're going to do. Uh, spending lots of money doing it. Uh, and the only outcome of this is going to be your sons getting killed if they go in and uh, and your economy's being cr crashed. That's it. OK. But as I say, the rulers despise you so much. They, they don't expect you to follow any of this. And all they're doing is massaging your kind of your um, sort of sensory ganglia so that you have an impression about something that you don't understand. You're not meant to understand it. You could understand it, but you're not meant to. What you're meant to do is be confused, and that's what this is here for. Have we finished yet? Exercises across Eastern Europe with allies. You see, they love this word allies. Yeah, all in it together, marching together. The fact that you don't have any morals or any scruples or any kind of what you might call um, ethical codex any um, any catechism of postulates. All you have is feelings, which is why we get back to gush and outrage, because that's all you've got. And those can be manipulated in any direction whatsoever, as, as quite clearly they are being. Anyway, let's finish up with allies from NATO and the UK Joint Expeditionary Force Alliance. That's an interesting... It's got all of the bits that... It's UK, so that's something that you like, right? Joint, which means, well, we're doing it all together. Expeditionary makes it sound like we're off to sort of, off to the, it's like Edmund Hillary. <laughs> Force means we're, we're going to make sure that what we want to happen when we get there happens. Alliance, it's a kind of doubling down on the all together in it, together, together thing. Who cares? You can't be expected to, to to remember any of this, which includes, it's got extra people coming along, Finland and Sweden. Yeah, Finland will be the end of Finland as a modern state. If Finland joins NATO, they will be Ukraine. And they've got this w woman moron in a leather jacket who looks like she's sort of escaped from a uh, Glastonbury, Glastonbury um, music festival who's supposed to be the prime minister. Has she ever read a book about, about Finnish history? Look up Scott Ritter and uh, sort on YouTube, sort by upload date, see what he's got to say about what will happen to Finland. This isn't a joke. If you're Finnish, um, I expect you have lots of feelings, uh, but ask yourself how you're going to feel about watching your country being, uh, what, watching what's happening to Ukraine being done to your country. How will you feel about that? How much gush are you going to have on that one? Sweden, I don't know so much about because Sweden's a different case. Anyway, Sweden's got its own problems. Dozens of British tanks will join the troops in countries from Finland to North Macedonia in the largest deployment in Europe since the Cold War. So they're getting you ready, I guess, in this for some sort of, um, well, world war. 
I hope you're going to enjoy it. But you can't be expected to follow any of this stuff. It's not meant to be followed. It's meant to be uh, mainlined into your nervous system and to render you basically useless as if, as if, as if you know, that, that needed to be done. But, but it's, it's a kind of ongoing process of being updated. Anyway, I was thinking about this. I thought the, uh, this Withering Scorn franchise that I seem to have developed here, it's, this isn't the thing. This isn't me. I, I, the only reason that I do this is because I find this so tedious. Uh, as I've said before, in terms of culinary stuff, you know, if I were running a restaurant, it's it's me like, you know, with a 40 year experience in in cooking, having to explain day after day after day after day how to make cheese on toast. I mean, there's only so many ways you can explain it. So I thought, why don't I make a couple of recommendations of something that isn't quite as um, cynical as, as this, because I'm not interested in this. And if it shows, there's a reason for that. So um, if you can still read, which some people can, surprisingly, given the electronic warfare that we're living through, I really recommend this as a book. If you want something to read, if you can still find it, it's uh, uh, René Guénon, and I don't know if you can see it up there, Crisis of the Modern World. Um, I, th I, th I don't agree with everything that he says, but it's an excellent book. And it kind of puts into perspective why I my you know I don't have this great belief in democracy or anything like this. I, I see democracy as a, degrade, it's a degraded condition, and I, I don't personally believe in all of the, the progress ideology that we're given. I think it's... I think it's Thinks propaganda, thinks lies. Don't believe in it. Um, and if you if you read that and you like it, then I would recommend uh, his a second book, which is really a corollary to Crisis of the Modern World, which is this book. It's not like I'm a René Guénon kind of disciple or anything like that, but the reign of quantity and sign of the times. I mean, these aren't uh, like easy reads, but they're not really difficult either. But I would suggest reading them quite slowly and thinking about them. He was a very intelligent man, and these books were written almost a hundred years ago, I think. I can't remember exactly, but quite a long time ago. 